Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Another year has gone by since I showed you my entire bag collection and as we are already in March, I thought it's about time to give you an update on how my collection has grown over the past year. So I would say grab yourself a drink of choice and a snack because this video will probably be a little bit longer than usual. I kept postponing this video for a little bit as it is quite some work to get all my bags together as I don't store all of them at home for obvious security reasons. And of course it also takes some time to film this as my collection has become quite big I have to say. Probably a little bit too big if you ask me. I did not sell any back in 2023 so my collection has grown a bit bigger. At the end of last year I think I was counting 27 bags. Now a year later I end up with 34 bags which is for sure a bit crazy and got a little bit out of control to be honest. I will definitely try to downsize my collection a little bit this year but I honestly don't really know yet which bags I could let go of. If you keep watching this video let me know which bags you would sell if this was your collection. Maybe you can name at least five bags that you would say goodbye to. I'm very curious about your opinion and I definitely need your help on this decision. In my very first bag collection video I grouped the bags by brand and last year I went from the oldest to the newest one. So maybe let's do it the other way around this year and start with my latest editions and then go back to the oldest bag in my collection. I will try to keep this video as short as possible as we have that many bags and I will focus more on the new bags that I added to my collection in 2023. If you're interested in more details about the other bags make sure to watch my previous bag collection videos or for some of my bags you even find an own dedicated unboxing or review video on my channel. Alright let me take another sip of my coffee and without further ado let's start chatting about my bag collection. If you've been following along you have just seen the latest addition to my collection in my previous video which is this very special Chanel braided raffia flap bag with champagne gold hardware from the 2023-2024 cruise collection. This is probably one of the most special bags in my collection. It was just love at first sight. It's the most perfect summer bag if you ask me. The details are so so beautiful and I can't wait to wear it out when the warmer days come and take it with me on some summer trips. I know that I said that I will try to stay away from Chanel this year as I already have a pretty solid lineup but Honestly, this just had my name written over it, so I couldn't resist to take this one with me. And the one rule that I would really like to stick to when it comes to Chanel bags this year is that if I decide to get another one, it definitely has to be one that is a little bit more special and a little bit more different just like this one here. Next up we again have another very special little Chanel bag that I got for Christmas which is this black and white tweed mini top handle flap bag with tiny black little sequins sprinkled in between. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera but I will include a close-up shot and this one comes with aged gold hardware. This bag is from the 2023-2024 pre-collection which was the best collection when it comes to bags of this year in my opinion. This is actually the only top handle bag that I own from Chanel but I have to say that I really like this style and I can definitely imagine to get another mini or small top handle bag in the future. Maybe in some pastel color like light blue. I think this bag is a perfect contrast to the raffia bag that I've just shown you as this one has a more wintry look. I'm very happy with these two bags as now I have one special bag for the colder days, this one here and one for the warmer days. So one special bag for the winter and one for the summer season. On our latest trip to Paris in November last year I got my very first Goya bag at the boutique at Rue Saint Honoré which is this black mini Anjou bag here. What makes this bag special to me is the little golden heart application that it has here on the front which immediately sold it to me as it refers a little bit to the name of my channel obviously. First I thought that I'd get a little bit bigger shopping tote such as the Saint Louis or the Artois but when I tried them on both didn't really spark excitement in me. Somehow I was just not happy with the fit of these two models. When I tried on the mini and shoe then instead I knew right away that this is the perfect perfect one for me and I didn't regret this decision so far. I just love this bag. It actually also fits quite a lot, definitely carries everything that I need so I'm super happy with this little bag and this one is something that I didn't have in my collection so far as the style is a little bit different and yeah. 
I'm happy with this choice. Let's continue with one of the few vintage bags that I bought, which is this Louis Vuitton Alma Lin Long. I found it in a vintage pop-up store in Vienna and there was just something about this uncommon shape that immediately caught my eye. I think the super elongated body of this bag just makes it look super interesting. You don't really see such a stretched version of an armor often these days, do you? The color is also not very typical for me as I'm usually not the biggest fan of denim bags, but this one here is a little bit more desaturated and a little bit darker than the usual denim. And to my own surprise, I really liked this navy gray tone. What I also like a lot about this bag is the mini monogram. LV tends to enlarge the monogram on bags these days, which I'm not a biggest fan of as I feel like if the logo is getting too big, it starts looking a little bit tacky even though this is definitely not the most practical bag as it only comes with these two top panels here and without any longer strap and it can be a little bit of a hassle to open and close it i really like this one as it's also something a little bit more special and rare the next bag that i'm going to show you i got gifted for my birthday last year it is this beige classic flap in a medium size in caviar with yellow gold hardware and this one completed my collection of Chanel classic bags. I always wanted to have a black, a white and a beige classic flap. And with this beige beauty here, I found my purse piece when it comes to Chanel classic flaps, I may dare to say. As I'm obviously very into neutrals and not that much into popping colors, I feel like this trio of classic shades is actually all I should ever need. And this already leads me to the other classic flap that I was hunting for the longest time, which is this small classic flap here. This one comes in caviar again, but with champagne gold hardware. This was definitely the hardest to find for me. For years, there was no white bag inside in a boutique in Vienna. And I also tried on each and every trip to another country in every Chanel boutique that I visited, but without success, until I decided to give up on the boutique route and track one down in the resale market. And right before our trip to Stockholm for Beyonce's Renaissance World Tour, I came across this beauty here at Redelux. I was always a bit skeptical on buying pre-owned Chanel bags as I had my doubts on the condition and also on the authenticity, but this bag is absolutely flawless and I fully trust the team at Redelux who was really helpful answering all my questions that I had before I decided to purchase this bag. And funny enough, right after I got this bag, I started seeing white classic flaps in each and every Chanel boutique that I visited, but always in a medium or in a large size, so I never came across a small one like mine ever since. First I thought that I would like to get this bag with yellow gold hardware, but I have to say that I'm actually quite happy with the champagne gold as it makes the bag look a little bit more lightweight and airy and a little bit more summery and this type of gold is also very easy to style. I also always thought that I would prefer lambskin over caviar, but I have to say that I equally like both types of leather. I think it always depends on the color which one I like more. Alright, let's continue with the next bag, which is again one from Chanel. In spring 2023, I came across this beautiful Chanel 19 bag in this beautiful neutral tone, which is, I think, called Ecru. It's the most perfect creamy off-white with a slightly pale pink cool undertone, which makes it a lot different to the other neutrals in my collection that mostly have warmer, subtle yellow undertones. I think it's no secret that I'm a big fan of the Chanel 19 bag, as it's a little bit more casual than the classic flap, quite easy to maintain, comfortable to wear, and probably one of Chanel's most practical bags. Perfect for day-to-day, -day, as it also fits quite a lot, even though this is the smallest available size of the 19 bag. All right, these were the bags that moved in in 2023. Now let's continue with the bags that I got in 2022 or earlier. As said before, if you would like to know more details about these, make sure to check out the own dedicated videos or my previous bag collection videos. As I love the 19 model so much, I have another one in the same size and in the same material, but this time in a more than perfect pearly white shade which I found at the Iconic Rue Cambon boutique in Paris in December 2022. As I could not find that white classic flap and I was really missing a white Chanel bag in my collection, I went for this one as an alternative. And finding a white bag at the Rue Cambon store, which is the only boutique that is doing white packaging, was just a dream. Even though I have two white Chanel bags now, I cannot think of giving this one away yet. I think the 19 bag and the classic flap are just so different. For me, these two models just have a 
completely different style and a completely different purpose. So you probably also keep seeing this one in my collection for quite some time. Next up, we have another vintage bag and this time something completely different than from what you've seen so far in this video. I am talking about this vintage Dior duffel bag from the John Galliano Fall Winter 2001 collection. A pretty rare find, I think, as you do not find a lot of options available on the resale market. This one I use as my gym bag and also for traveling. I just love the retro look of it. It's definitely not in perfect condition, but I really don't mind as I don't need to worry about this bag too much. Generally, this bag is quite forgiving and durable. All right, let's continue with the one and only Fendi bag in my collection, which I got for my birthday in 2022, which is the Fendi Mini Baguette. This bag I also enjoy wearing a lot. It has a perfect size. It comes with this little top panel, but also with a longer strap so that you can wear it crossbody. It is surprisingly easy to style and it actually fits more than you would think. The best Fendi bag if you ask me. Okay, we get once again back to Chanel. In summer 2022, I I found this small classic flap here on a trip to Paris with friends. I found it at the Chanel boutique in the Printemps department store. In contrast to my other beige classic flap, which is medium and comes with yellow gold hardware and in caviar leather, this one here comes in lambskin and with champagne gold hardware and this one is a small size. This is how they look when I hold them next to each other. I am honestly not so sure about the color names. I think this one here is a beige clear. I'm not so sure which color this one is. They might look pretty much the same on camera, but in reality, it's not exactly the same shade of beige. So I'm not sure if the color difference comes from different types of leather, as this one is lambskin and this one is caviar, or if this one is actually some seasonal type of beige. I really can't tell, but I love both of them. and. You could debate that this is probably something that is unnecessary as it's two beige bags with a very very similar shade but somehow I could not get rid of any of these so far and I think I will keep both of them for a while but let me know your opinion on this. The other one is a perfect staple bag for all year round while I think this one here is a little bit more of a summer bag as it's a little bit smaller as it has the lighter hardware and yeah, just in general, I prefer wearing this one in summer a little bit more. June 2022 was a very lucky month when it comes to Chanel bag finds for me. On that same trip to Paris, I came across this medium-sized Deauville bag in dark beige, which I also found at the 31 Rue Combon boutique, which I visited for the very first time back then. This is actually the only big shopping bag that I own, and I mainly use this one for traveling as my carry-on bag, as it pretty much fits everything. No problem to carry around a laptop in this one and I also really like that it comes with the longer strap which has here some leather part which makes it quite comfortable to wear on the shoulder too and it also perfectly sits on the suitcase so I'm really a big fan of this one here as a travel bag I think this one is better than a book tote which I actually never owned but I tried on a couple of times because the Dior book tote only comes with those short top handles and has no longer strap and I think this really makes this bag the perfect shopping and traveling tote bag. And what makes this bag extra special to me is that it has the address of the boutique where I bought it written on the bag. So it says here 31 Rue Cambon, which is the boutique where I got it, which I found is just some very nice souvenir and some very nice memory of visiting the iconic boutique where Coco's apartment is located for the very first time. Then I still have the Anina Bing tailing tote in my collection, even though I have to be honest, I pretty much never wear this bag. This one was an impulsive sale purchase back in January 2022, which turned out not to be the wisest decision, I have to say. This bag is just not nice to wear as these handles keep falling down inside the bag. You see that they just slide down here. And also the shape does not keep up very well. It always bends. Now I have a little paperboard inside that it keeps standing up, but it really is just not a very well constructed bag, I have to say. I think it's really time to sell this one if I find anybody who's interested and for whom this bag works out. For Christmas in 2021, I got the one and only Dior saddle bag that I own in this beautiful grained calfskin in the shade Latte with aged gold hardware. Still one of my favorite go-to bags, very easy to style, and even though this bag might not be on trend anymore, I still love the look of it. I also have a shoulder strap for this one, which gives it an extra interesting look and obviously makes it also a little bit more practical to wear, as you can then wear it as a shoulder bag. It is too short to wear it as crossbody, but there are different types of straps available at Dior, and 
I really like the look of this one. And actually, I think the newer models of the Dior saddle do come with a thinner leather strap already. This was not the case back then when I got mine, but in the meantime, you even get a shoulder strap included. In autumn 2021, I got a small version of the YSL Lulu bag in the shade called Dark Naturel. I only have two Saint Laurent bags in my collection and both of them are Lulus. The other one I will show you a bit later. I've not been considering to get any other YSL bag for quite some time. At some point, I somehow lost interest in the Solferino and the Sunset bag that I think I mentioned in my previous bag collection video still. I feel like the brand currently just doesn't have its moment, but we'll see. Maybe the spring summer season we see some new bags that will be interesting, but I definitely still love my Lulu bags and I love this color, but I wear it more in autumn. Then we have another Chanel 19, again in the same size, but this time in another material. I am talking about this great tweed beauty here. I think this bag should be from the 21A collection, if I'm not mistaken. This was my first Chanel bag that came with a microchip metal plate instead of the serial number sticker and the authenticity card that were used until then. Also this one I love wearing in winter and I think that this one is also a quite special one as you really don't see it that often on others. Every time I enter a Chanel boutique wearing this bag, even the essays are amazed because they say that they've never seen this one before. I bought it in a boutique in Vienna back then. When I wore it in Paris, the essays there said that they've never seen this bag before and this is exactly what I love about seasonal bags. They are just a little bit more rare and a little bit more special and you don't come across this style probably ever again. A bag that I should definitely wear more often is this one here. It's from an Austrian brand called Saga Vienna. As I am from Austria, I should have at least one bag from an Austrian designer in my collection, right? This is a small Vienna crossbody tree color bag. What I love especially about this one is the Viennese netting here with the silver metallic leather below and also the interwoven strap. Let me take this one out so you can have a look. So it has here this white and silver metallic strap and then on top it has this little black and white woven detail which makes the bag very special I have to say. I think the spring season is just perfect to wear this bag out again. And then we have here the last Chanel 19 bag of my collection which was the first 19 bag and the second Chanel bag that I ever got. I got this one gifted for my 25th birthday. This one is the only 19 bag that I got in the larger size but it's not the maxi. I love the shade of beige. I think it's called dark beige and this bag I've enjoyed wearing a lot lately. It just fits so much. Sometimes I have the feeling it's a little bit too big but sometimes I have these days where it's just perfect and yeah as I said currently I'm really obsessing over this shade of beige again. The only basket bag in my collection is this one here from Lueve that I got in spring 2021. I think this one is a medium size. Still loving this bag and looking much forward to wearing it again a bit more in spring and summer. We've seen many variations of basket bags being launched since the hype of this one faded away from Celine to YSL but I have to say that this one here is still my favorite. The second Dior bag in my collection is this Ferdi Montaigne in Navy Oblique Chakar, which I got gifted for my birthday in 2020. This was the very first Dior bag that I ever got. Oblique was super hyped back then, and even though it might no longer be on trend now, I think that the oblique pattern is one of Dior's most iconic signature brand symbols. Then I also still have my Balenciaga B crossbody bag, which I got four years later after my very first Balenciaga bag, which was also my very first designer bag the navy pochette which i'm going to show you a little later honestly i'm not wearing this bag that often anymore but i also still do like it too much to give it away we'll see how this will develop however since balenciaga launched that one campaign you probably all have heard of i do not feel like i want to support this brand publicly anymore even though it seems to come back and many people started wearing it again but in the end i think this is a very subtle balenciaga bag and i still really like the shade of it so i probably should wear it again a little bit more often because otherwise it would be just a waste and it would be a pity to just let it sit around in my drawer and you know not making use of it. Let's come to my all-time number one favorite bag of my collection. You can probably guess which one it is. Of course it is my black medium classic flap in lambskin with yellow gold hardware which was the very first Chanel bag that I ever got back in 2019 for my master's degree graduation and 
Therefore, this bag will always hold a very special place in my fashion heart. As I already said in my bag collection video last year, if I would have to keep just one bag, this would be the one. As mentioned before, I have another Lulu bag, which was the very first YSL bag that I got back in spring 2019. This is the medium size and the color is called Blanc Vintage. I hope I'm spelling this correctly. This is also one of the very few bags that I have with silver hardware, which perfectly complements this cooler toned neutral shade, I think. I think this color is still available, but I haven't seen it with silver hardware lately, only with gold, but maybe it will come back in this configuration too. I'm talking all my lipstick off. This is taking so long. <laughs> Let me do a little makeup touch up. Loving this. Prada one here. I've always been a big Karl Lagerfeld fan, so at some point I also got some bags from his namesake label. I love the icon bag, which I got in a smaller size in beige, and then I also have it in the bigger size in black. As you might have noticed, I do not have any MS bags in my collection, just for the reason that I was just not lucky enough to score one so far, but Honestly, if you are looking for an alternative to the Birkin bag, this one is the one that I would go for. The shape is a little bit similar and it also has a top panel, but the advantage of this one over a Birkin is that it actually comes with a longer strap as well. So you can also wear this one comfortably as a shoulder bag, which makes this such a great everyday bag. The little detail on the side gives a little bit of Acne Studios or Celine vibes, so I'm just a big fan of this bag because it comes at a very friendly price point and these two are definitely my most worn bags of my entire collection because they're just so practical, they're so easy to style, they're so comfortable to wear, they fit everything that you need. I'm really a big fan. This bag I've been using as my university bag and later as my office bag day in and day out for many, many years. The bigger one here is also perfect for business trips as it does fit my laptop. This black one here is already my second one of this model because I've worn the first one down to death. But generally I have to say that the quality and the durability of this bag is absolutely amazing. If you are looking for the most practical everyday bag, this is the one you should go for. Then I also still own my White Poinsa Cooler PS11 bag, which was the very first vintage bag that I got back in 2018 in Milano in Italy. As I already said in my previous bag collection videos, unfortunately I'm not wearing this bag that often as I do prefer my tiny models when I go for a PS bag. So I guess it's really time to say goodbye to this one. Let's see if I will find a nice new owner for this bag this year. Sorry if the light is not that good anymore, by the way, it started raining and it became quite dark, so I hope it's okay. Now let's do a little trip down memory lane in Celine history. Back to the days where the brand was still written with an accent aigu and was under creative direction of Phoebe Philo, who just came back with her namesake label in 2023. In 2018, on a trip to Copenhagen, I got this gray Celine Trio bag. Such a pity that this model was discontinued. I think it's such a great bag. It is so easy to style and so comfortable to wear. I'm really a big fan of this one and I also have it in another color which I will show you in a minute but first I will show you a couple of other ones that I got in between and with the next bag we land back in the days where Farfetch was still successful and the best address when it comes to great sales deals not sure if you are aware but in the meantime the honor luxury retailer was sold to a South Korean investor and the stock completely crashed I'm curious if Farfetch will ever recover but time will show one bag that I scored on Farfetch in 2018 is the JW Anderson Pierce bag, which was heavily hyped back then. This one here is the mini size and it comes with a chain strap. Let me take it out to show you. So this is it with the strap. You can wear it as a crossbody bag as well as as a shoulder bag. Back then the Pierce bags really had their moment, but nowadays you almost never see them anymore. I think it's still a pretty cool bag and I still enjoy wearing mine for dinners and night outs. I have some more points of schooler bags to show you, such as this Harbour bag here. This one is still one of my favorite summer bags, especially with this braided strap here. I think it looks super interesting and it's also very easy to style as it comes with silver and with gold. And I think this model is also a bag that you almost never see on anybody else nowadays. And also back then, I think not many people had it, at least I've not seen it that often. 
I think it's a very beautiful bag and I really really enjoy wearing this one. My love for Prenza Schooler bags already started quite early so with this black PS11 tiny model here we have reached the year 2017 in my bag collection history. I also have this one in white which was my very first Prenza Schooler bag actually and the black one I just got one month later. What I love about this model is that again it combines silver and gold in the hardware and I also really love the square shape which perfectly fits everything that I need and then it also comes with an adjustable strap it's perfect for wearing it as a shoulder bag as well as as a crossbody bag and I also love the fact that these bags are really easy to open and close because you just have to pull this out and put it back in like this super convenient. These two are definitely among my most warm bags and their condition is still pristine. They are very durable and easy to maintain. The quality is just amazing. In the same year I also got my very first Celine bag which was also a trio bag but in black. Also a bag that I still often reach out to and that I really enjoy wearing after so many years. It's just so classic and a true understatement bag as minimalistic as I can get, I guess. And now we're almost at the end of this video or actually at the beginning of my bag collection with this APC Demi Lune bag or also called Half Moon bag in black calfskin, which was the second designer bag that I ever got. Minimalistic style was at its peak back in 2017 and this bag was highly popular back then, especially as it came at a quite low price point compared to other bags back then. A perfect entry bag, so to say. Today, I barely reach out to this bag anymore, mainly because it's quite hard to open and close and get things in and out, as it's quite stiff and narrow and I often scratch my skin on the zippers. Maybe it's also time to say goodbye to this one. Let me know what you think. And with the next bag, we have reached the very beginning of my bag collection journey. The bag that started it all is my Balenciaga navy pochette canvas that I got back in 2016, almost nine years ago. Crazy how time flies. If you're still watching at this point, stop for a minute and drop me a comment and let me know which bag was your very first designer bag if you're a collector too. I would love to know. I think the Balenciaga navy pochette is a quite untypical bag for a very first designer bag but at that point of time this was just a very hyped bag and the price point was not too high i think it was between five and six hundred euros back then which was a lot of money to me and it was very very special but if you compare it to a chanel bag for example of course it's not really comparable this bag definitely has a lot of sentimental attachment to it and i'll probably never get rid of this one and that's it you guys this is my entire bag collection as of today if you've seen me wearing any other bags, these were not mine because sometimes I like to swap bags with my family or my friends. If I count it correctly, we are at 34 bags now, which is absolutely insane. If you divide this by nine years, this would be four new bags every year. I cannot and actually do not wear all of them often enough, so I'm definitely planning on selling some of my bags in the near future. I just need to find out which ones I will let go and I have to say that this decision is not so easy for me as I would wish it to be. So let me know which bags were your least favorite or which ones you would let go of. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Or if you're actually interested in buying one of my bags, let me know. You can reach out to me on Instagram. And once I downsize a bit, I would love to add some MS bags to my collection, but we all know that I've not been that lucky so far. Lately, I've also been considering getting a little piano bag. If you would like to know more about the bags that I'm currently eyeing, make sure to watch my 2024 wishlist video. Anyways, we will see what time will bring and I will of course keep you updated. As I already said in last year's video, curating the perfect bag collection is a process and probably it will never be a definite but ever evolving one depending on your needs in different stages of life as well as development of personal style. If you're interested to learn more about a specific bag let me know and I can make a dedicated video about it or I can also compare different bag models with each other. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to not miss out on any upcoming ones. I would love to see you back on my channel soon. Bye guys!